President Trump is heading across the Atlantic for a three-day state visit to the U.K. The president will meet with members of the royal family and British politicians. He will also join commemorations marking 75 years since the D-Day landing. This will be President Trump and the First Lady's second official trip to the U.K. Even though he hasn't arrived yet, President Trump is already bucking tradition and stirring controversy. Susanna Mendonca from our partners at BBC News reports. State visits aren't supposed to delve into politics, but this is Donald Trump. Not only has he suggested that the UK government include the Brexit party leader Nigel Farage in its negotiations with the EU, he's also advising Britain to opt for a no-deal Brexit if it doesn't get its way. The US president's views could be seized on by some in this ever-growing lineup of conservative leadership candidates for a contest in which the debate has centred on leaving with no deal versus delaying Brexit to do a deal. The former leader of the House has been putting more meat on the bone of her plan today, which sounded a lot like no deal, although she's calling it something different. I have a three-step plan for a managed exit, which I do believe is workable. I've been advocating it in government for some time now. And I think it's based on the premise that, number one, we have to leave the EU at the end of October. And number two, the withdrawal agreement bill is dead. The Home Secretary, who's keeping no deal on the table for his bid, is promising a digital solution to the Irish border. I would make a grand gesture, a grand offer to Ireland that we would cover all their costs, the upfront costs, the running costs, of a new digitised border. I think it can be done in a couple of years, but we would cover their costs. While the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, who says a no-deal Brexit is not realistic, is suggesting a time limit on the Irish backstop and a new free trade deal with the EU. Morning, Mr Keevar. But the latest wannabe Prime Minister to join the fray is throwing another referendum into the mix. The former universities minister who quit over Theresa May's withdrawal agreement says he wants to broaden the debate. If the choice is between no deal and revoke, then the way to break through this impasse and actually get things moving could be a second vote. So that's 13 candidates so far trying their luck in a race that doesn't officially begin until Theresa May formally steps down. And that'll be after Donald Trump's been and gone. Susanna Mendonca, BBC News. And for more on the president's UK trip, let's bring in CBSN royal contributor, Victoria Arbiter. Victoria, thanks so much for being here. So in addition to weighing in on Brexit, President Trump has also endorsed Boris Johnson as the next prime minister of the UK. What do the British people think about President Trump, the American president, weighing in on British politics? Well, I think it's really just going to further raise the ire of the British people. There's always already been a promise for widespread protests when Donald Trump arrives. When this visit was originally, the invitation for this visit was originally extended, that was two years ago, and a petition was formed that 1.8 million people signed. Now, England is a tiny little country in relation to the US, and so that is a vast number of people. So I think when any foreign head of state weighs in on another country's political situation, people are quite sensitive to that. And so I think Trump choosing to do this right before he arrives, probably not the wisest decision. So I know protocol, obviously, is a huge thing with these kinds of visits. But how will this particular state visit, you think, be similar to past visits from U.S. presidents? And in which ways do you think it will be different? <laughs> well, I suppose it, let's go with the similarities <laughs> first. Uh, there's only been two other previous state visits for U.S. Presidents Obama in 2011 and George W. Bush in 2003. And with those, neither of those presidents were, able, presidents were able to have a carriage procession because of security reasons. The same thing is happening with Donald Trump. He'll be greeted a ceremonial welcome in the gardens at Buckingham Palace. I think where we're going to start to see things that are not perhaps so similar is these widespread protests. The Trump baby blimp balloon is going to be relaunched. Mm. Uh, already, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has said that he is not going to go to the state banquet at Buckingham Buckingham Palace tomorrow night. So I think uh, we're going to be sort of watching this state visit, just wondering what can possibly go wrong. I mean, this is a busy time. Sunday marks 66 years since Queen Elizabeth's coronation. She has hosted more than 100 state visits in that time. And we know President Trump is not the most popular world leader in the UK, as you've pointed out with these protests. How has the Queen actually dealt with past state visitors who were also sort of polar polarizing figures 
and where you had a, a British people who were publicly expressing that. Well, this is where the Queen is a master when it comes to diplomacy. So thank goodness she is the one that's going to be leading this state visit. And you're right, she's had to entertain, as is her constitutional duty, numerous political heroes and villains over the years. Putin in 2003 was marred by human rights activists. In 1971, Emperor Hirohito, Japan's wartime leader, was met by angry veterans and people angry that he was being afforded the pomp and pageantry that goes with a state visit. When Nikolai Ceausescu visited in the 1970s, Robert Hardman, who's a royal biographer, said that the Queen later told a guest she saw him walking through the gardens and she hid behind the bushes so that she wouldn't have to talk to him. So when it comes to the public display, the Queen will be diplomacy uh, personified. She will lay on the very best royal hospitality because the government is looking to her to lay on the charm offensive, to reaffirm the relationship between the UK and the US. Yes, there's a lot of show that goes into a state visit, but the purpose of them is to further national interests for the UK, and that's what she'll be doing. So some additional context here. During the 2016 election, Meghan Markle said that she would move to Canada if Donald Trump was elected uh, president, and the president was recently asked about those comments by an interviewer and said, quote, no, I didn't know that she was nasty. And then on Twitter, the president said he never called Meghan Markle nasty. But the bottom line here, Victoria, I mean, given what you just said, uh, clearly this is not likely to be something that the queen would bring up. Nevertheless, might this impact the way in which this state visit proceeds with the royals? Again, you, you kind of scratch your head. Why would he say something like that? And the fact is he's denying it, but it's on tape. So there's evidence that he did say this. The royal family will be professional and duty bound. They won't say anything. But Prince Harry is going to a private lunch with the queen on Monday with the president and the first lady. How incredibly awkward this is going to be for Prince Harry. He'll He'll lay on his very best charm because that's what he's been raised to do. That's what he's required to do. It is his wife, though, Victoria. It is his wife, and this is where it becomes incredibly difficult. But Trump, he, if you remember when Kate was photographed sunbathing topless, he had comments about that. He has made really rather grotesque comments about how he could have perhaps gotten lucky, for want of a better phrase, with, with Princess Diana. He's got to meet William at the state banquet. So, mm. yes, I think they're all sort of aware of Donald Trump and how he's put his foot in it on numerous occasions, but Harry is there to support his grandmother. He'll also be there to say thank you to Melania Trump because she did lead the US team to Toronto in 2017 for the Invictus Games. Harry is passionate about the Invictus Games. It would have meant a lot that she was there for that. So, yes, it is his wife, but Harry is going to have to just toe the line, which is what the royal family <laughs> does, and mind that he doesn't say anything. All right, it'll be a fascinating visit. Victoria Arbiter, Victoria, always great to see you. Thank you. Thank you.